Alright, here with Grinnell Sabrin, area agronomist with uh, Cargill near Morris, Manitoba, and we are talking about fall uh, nitrogen applications. And uh, certainly hearing from uh, many farmers across Manitoba and uh, even into some of the other provinces about the dryness this fall. Um, let's talk about putting anhydrous ammonia on this fall when, when conditions are this dry. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, today, Right now we're in a situation in a Red River Valley where we've got our heavy clay soils. We haven't had much appreciable moisture for a couple months now. Fields are very dry, very uh, blocky, not blocky, but our soil texture is really going to be an issue. If we try to put a cultivator through this, we'll be digging up some pretty big lumps. So it's got a lot of producers questioning, first of all, you know, what are we going to, should we be doing any kind of fall work? Because right now we're just are we going to wear out or pull our cultivator apart? So it would really do a, a poor job of even cultivating. Never mind getting in there and doing any kind of ammonia and hydrous applications. So with anhydrous ammonia, we really the, the key thing with anhydrous ammonia is you want the seal, the soil to seal around your ammonia band to help retain. And if you don't have moisture and you've got these this is these big clods, we're going to have a real trouble sealing around. So there's a potential we could lose a lot of ammonia. And the moisture as well also really helps hold that ammonia into the ground. Um, the other side of the coin right now too is we're still our soil is still too warm to start applying ammonia. A lot of seasons some producers would have started already. The key is you still want to wait for the soil temperature to drop uh, to almost plus five would be an ideal or cooler and getting cooler. If we apply ammonia before that, the soil microorganisms are still very active, so they'll convert the ammonia to nitrate, where it's more susceptible to loss. Now in our heavy clay soils where we do have moisture, excess moisture issues, uh, applying ammonia too early in the season, if a lot of it converts over to nitrate, there's a higher potential to lose it next spring. The more ammonia we can keep in, as an, in the ammonium form, the, the, the better we'll be. So for, for those farmers who, who certainly use anhydrous ammonia as a way to kind of lighten the, uh, lighten the load in the spring, if you will, um, if conditions don't really improve to the point where they can get on or should get on and, and do anhydrous, I mean, does that create a bit of a mess in the spring? What would be a recommendation to sort of make up for that? Well, it creates a bit of a logistical issue. Uh, recommendation for the springtime will depend on, number one, what, uh, what crops the producer intends to grow as well as what kind of equipment they have. So some are equipped that they are able to side, uh, side band their nitrogen if needed. The reason they, some, some, some like having all the options because some years they'll decide to anhydrous. If the conditions are all right for it, they'll, do, they'll usually do a certain percentage of their acres. Uh, otherwise they, they're set up so that they can side band, they can broadcast. A lot of them have high clearance sprayers that they can use to top dress or to lay down liquid nitrogen if needed but it does create a bit of a logistical issue. Uh, in our heavy clay soils here, usually we have one op or one chance to get a good, uh, good emergence or to, to, to seed. So now if we, the, the issue with applying ammonia and hydrous in the spring is you're giving a cultivation to the land, so now you've opened it up. You might be drying out the soil a little bit or you're, you're really disturbing that seed bed, which can, can cause, uh, again, it, well, issues with emergence and Emergence is key to, to getting your crop off to a good start and targeting those high yields.